not-so-smart drive has been working. The only problem I'm having is these Razer scooters, their controller, the reason they use air quotes because they're not really a controller, they're just relays in a box, but the controller requires you to kickstart them, so you have to be moving before the thing kicks on. Now, ordinarily, that'd be fine if I was using the thing as a stand-up kick scooter, but in my case, in the wheelchair, it takes a little more effort than I can easily put out to get the thing to kick on. So what I'm thinking about doing is just replacing the motor controller with some relays. And it's interesting because their motor controller is basically all just relays anyways. The only circuitry on here is to inhibit this thing from turning on when the charger is plugged in. And also, when you first turn the unit on, it clicks on one relay that connects the motor to this controller. Now electric motors, when you spin them by hand, actually generate a small amount of electricity. So what this thing's doing is this controller is powered up by the batteries, and then it connects to the motor, and what it's looking for is X amount of voltage coming back into this circuit that's being generated by the motor. And then that voltage in turn is used by a couple of little tiny transistors down in here to kick on the second relay. And that's when the motor gets powered up with the full 24 volts. So what I'm gonna do is just basically get rid of all this and replace it with a single relay and hook that up to my thumb switch through this connector. So when I hit the button, it connects the batteries to the motor. That's all I need. I need it to do it at any speed. Potential issues I'm thinking about once this is done is starting from a stop, the thing's gonna try and spin and chatter and hop. So I might need to create some sort of half voltage starting thing. Um, that's gonna involve some resistors and maybe making up a little bit of circuitry. But for now, I'm just gonna hook the thing up so it turns on when I hit the switch and we'll see how that works. We've completely cut all the connectors off of the original controller and I've replaced it now with one 30 amp relay. This is unfortunately a 12 volt relay and I think running it on 24 volts will burn it out. So I had to sort of do two separate power systems here. Basically 24 volts comes from the batteries on this connector, goes into here, goes through the main power switch, from there into the relay, from the relay out to the motor. Got my existing remote here uh, and I'm just gonna be using the blue button. That comes down to this little connector over here. And what I had to do is pull just 12 volts off of one of these batteries. I know it's not a good idea, but relays use such a low amperage, it's not gonna really make a difference. And I'm going to be switching the relay on 12 volts on and off through these wires here. So right now, let me plug in the power. Power's connected. We should get a power light over here. All right, looks like we're good. Nothing smoking. Let me finish up the wiring here and we'll give it a test. Okay, moment of truth. The wiring's all done. All I have to do is plug in this connector which connects up the remote. Main power switch is off. Unfortunately, the way I had to wire this thing up with a dual power system, there's no way to turn off the controlling relay. So anytime you push this button, that relay will click. Um, it would be nice to put maybe some fuse protection and another power switch on that, but for now, I think we're good. We're dealing with such a low amount of amperage, and these wires are so tiny that if anything happens, those things will just pop and fry, and uh, it'll essentially work like a fuse. So main test now, kick on the power switch over here, pick it up off the ground. I'm gonna get my wire cutters ready here in case I need them to cut this wire right here. Let's see what we get. Ooh, it works. All right, there we have a modified electrical system. We've gotten rid of their controller. Let me get this thing buttoned back up, put the cover on, stick it back on the chair, and go for a test. We are now reattached modified the uh, cover on the thing so it covers up most of the important parts now. Uh, I got the remote running up through here, power switch is off. So all you'll hear is that control relay. Yeah, this should be an interestingly, um, probably slightly more dangerous thing. 
What I've discovered very quickly is a speed control or a variable speed control is going to be pretty necessary here. It will get me moving from a stop. If you pulse it, um, it's not as hard on the motor, but I just feel like putting that straight voltage directly to the motor at a dead stop on something that's not designed for this weight uh, could result in letting the smoke out of the box and I prefer not to do that. Um, I was looking around on the Fry's promo code emails and they have some uh, knockoff electric skateboards that have a pretty good range, lithium ion battery, and I think a similar type of thing could be used with those. I think for the next version of this, probably one of those electric skateboards that has a wireless hand control and speed adjustment is going to be the way to go. But for now, I mean, it's a, it's a cool proof of concept. I don't know if I'm going to use it on a daily basis because the thing, it's just so noisy. Even when it's not, even when I'm not in power mode, there's just a lot of chain sound. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's cool and all, and I'll probably use it here and there, but more or less, it's just kind of a proof of concept. The next one's going to be a lot more usable. <laughs> I got a little bit burned out on Pokemon Go over the last week or so. I was running around like a crazy person catching all the new uh, Gen 2 Pokemon and everything. I've um, been playing around with that uh, locator app trying to find new things around me and whatnot, but I don't know. I'm not going to go too nuts with it because I'm still just... I, I need a break. <laughs> it's raining today quite a bit. I haven't really figured out what to do today. Day's already halfway over. It's almost 2 o'clock. <laughs> Uh, yeah, to find something to do though, because I can't sit around and do nothing. My computer, the main one that I use for all my media and uh, gaming, anything like that, it's been having problems where it doesn't want to turn on. I think it's the power supply. I don't know what else it could be. The power supply that's in there was the same one when I was running that thing hot a couple of years ago with five ATI Radeon HD 7950 video cards running full blast 24 seven. So there's a slight chance that power supply might have some miles on it. Won't turn on, left it unplugged overnight. Usually that fixes it, still won't turn on. Um, got it to power on once and then the thing just cut out. Uh, I've got another power supply I'm gonna try putting in there. Sunset is at six o'clock. I've gotta get outside and do something. I haven't been out there all day. It just hit me. Goodwill. I'm going to run to a couple of their stores. I'm uh, grabbing my little Sony camera here. If the thing's been powered it on at all recently, you flip this cover open, screen's on, and you can hit record immediately. No boot up time, no waiting around, no screwing around, no nothing like that. Plus it's small and I've got this little handle so I can just kind of stick it in my lap or put it in my pocket on my hoodie and people aren't going to notice it as much as this thing. This camera, um, has a very large lens. It's got the screen, the uh, the giant gorilla pod, the giant microphone up top here, and uh, it's just a lot more conspicuous. Anywho, I'm gonna go hop in the van and time for some goodwill. <laughs> ceiling in here is in rare form today. Check that out. It's like all like billowy and it's like some sort of sweet upholstery. I've gone through four different wiper blades on the back window of this van. I've tried the super expensive ones, the ones that are for curved glass, all this stuff. None of them work except I finally bought a cheapo one. Four dollars and 29 cents. That windshield wiper actually works and it actually wipes all of the glass. The problems I had with the more expensive ones is they would only wipe a very small section in the middle, which doesn't do you any good when you're bombing down the freeway and you need to see out the back of this thing. Because, you know, in 1995 when they made these vans, things that were shaped like, uh, you know, shoebox were considered aerodynamically acceptable. Yeah.
whole lot of stuff that was too exciting at this Goodwill. I wound up getting a coffee grinder uh, for $7. Probably a little more than I should have paid, but this one's automatic and it has a built-in cord reel and all this stuff. There was a wall mount for a TV or computer monitor that I almost bought, but it was 10 bucks. And I know at Fry's with the promo codes, I can get those for six to $7 typically. Plus they wouldn't be used and probably worn out and have missing parts. I'm trying to think of another Goodwill to go to next. I thought I was gonna mix it up a little bit. Go to Value Village. I'm actually sitting outside of it right now. But then I realized they also have fluorescent lighting here. And I spent about 10 or 12 minutes in the Goodwill. And I think that was my quota of fluorescent lighting for the day. I'm not feeling so hot right now. Probably just as well, because Value Village doesn't actually really rank on my list as far as decent thrift stores. I mean, stuff is cheap, but they never have anything useful. Unless you'd want old school cathode ray tube televisions. They got lots of those for 10 bucks or less. The old radiation king. Go find something else to do. Couldn't figure out anything else to do, so I went to McDonald's, got some food, got a Diet Dr. Pepper, and I came to one of my favorite places to sit during rush hour. Right here is where everyone tries to merge onto I-5, and people get really cranky and honk at each other a lot. Traffic doesn't move very fast. Overpass up there is backed up too. I kind of like this weather too. It's sort of cool, not really raining. Good place to come, eat your food, sit and listen to some podcasts. Oh, I'm gonna do that for a little while. Yeah. Well, rush hour is just about over, so a lot less angry motorists passing by. It's starting to get dark too. Sometimes just a change of scenery is nice. I find myself uh, sitting around staring at the walls. I don't know. Sometimes you gotta get out, even if it's just getting out and not doing anything. I suppose I should head back and swap out that power supply now. Kinda want my computer working. Always look out. Remember last week when I was screwing around trying to get this refund check that was owed to me from the office space I was renting? Well, I got the check in the mail. It's for four dollars and twenty cents uh... cool i guess i'll get a mcdouble at mcdonald's or haven't gotten that power supply changed yet but i do have this coffee grinder a used coffee grinder it was seven dollars it's got some used um... coffee in there i figure i keep accidentally purchasing whole bean coffee so now that i have this uh... Shouldn't really have that issue anymore. Uh, might as well plug the thing in and test it. I probably should have done this before I bought it. Well, I'm gonna at least get that computer unhooked and start messing around with that. Then I will think about coffee. Got the power supply swapped out and we're good to go. I forgot this was a $375 power supply when I bought it originally. Uh, 1250 watts, got tons of modular outputs. Turns out the thing has either a five or seven year warranty. So I'm gonna try and get a hold of my original receipt from Amazon and see if I can get this thing rma made out because it's a kick-ass power supply and this thing was pushing five video cards like hot for over a year. And if it can last that long doing that, I would definitely love to get it replaced or fixed or whatnot. I just threw a 750 watt uh, 80 bronze power supply in there now. I've only got two video cards and I'm not doing any heavy gaming, so I think that should be good for now. Just realized I'm out of cat food, so I'm gonna have to go to the store now. I figure what better to do when the computer is working again, not that one, it's this thing, than to 3D print some stuff. So I'm printing a Totodile. It's the uh, new Pokemon, one of the Gen 2 Pokemon characters. Should be done in about 45 minutes. All right, well, I'm gonna clean up this mess here that's getting cluttered, then I'm gonna go to the grocery store because, uh, well, this one thinks he's hungry. 